Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin tones, it could be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting Avino's Hydrate and Protect SPF 50 to the test to see if it's black girl approved. On the website, it says that this sunscreen gives you broad spectrum sun protection you need with the hydration your skin wants. Made with moisture rich, active natural oat formula for all day hydration. This sunscreen is water and sweat resistant for 80 minutes and oil free in a travel friendly 88 milliliter tube. So if you missed the previous episode, I will leave a link in the cards above as well as down below. Make sure you are subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time we put another sunscreen in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm writing this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind. First, let's talk a little bit about the brand. As most of you know, Avino is a household name when it comes to skincare. They've been in the game for a very long time. The premise of their company is to provide quality products for those with sensitive as well as troubled skin types at an affordable price. One of their most iconic ingredients are the collodial oatmeal, I have never been able to pronounce that properly, um, which is known for its soothing and healing properties, especially soothing for those with eczema prone skin, which I personally deal with. So of course they're owned by Johnson & Johnson, and while they do not test on animals themselves, they do allow their products to be tested by third party on animals where it's required by law. So they are not 100% cruelty free at all. Um, more than that, most of their products do contain a certain amount of honey and lanolin, which are both animal derived ingredients, as well as they have certain byproducts from insects and fish. Therefore, they are also not vegan. So if that is something that's important to you, this may not be the one for you, but if you are someone who does have the sensitive skin, eczema, dry skin, XYZ, this may be something for you. These products are pretty much available everywhere. They are quite inexpensive as well. They usually come in some decent sizing too, so there's a lot of product that you're getting. You can find these a lot of the time in bulk, so it's something you can stock up on as well. And the other thing I'll mention is that they have a wide range of products, so ranging from everyone from babies all the way up to adults and you know the older generation as well. So there's something for absolutely everyone, and that's something that I really do like about this brand. Overall, I'm gonna be giving the brand a zero 0.7 for packaging so we can see the packaging is like this sleek mattified tube which I've seen a lot of drugstore products come like this a lot of Neutrogena comes that way as well so it's not anything surprising um, it is travel friendly of course because of the way that it is here um, so it's something I would normally carry in my bag or if I am traveling which I haven't been doing a lot of obviously but if you are this is something you can bring with you and because of the way that this locks like shut, like it actually, you can hear the click when it locks. So it's great, it doesn't have any mess when you're traveling, it's not gonna spill anywhere. The only thing I don't like, which is, I know that the one from Neutrogena, the Hydro Boost looks like almost exactly like this as well, but because of the way it snaps, it does get a little bit dirty in the cap itself. But other than that, it's fine. I love tubes specifically because it eliminates um, you getting bacteria and oil in the actual product so it stays better and longer as well as when you're almost done with the product you can actually cut it because it's a tube cut it and then use your finger or a spatula to get the rest of the product in the inside so not a single drop goes to waste so for packaging this is going to be getting a 0.8 for price and quantity this product retails for 17.99 canadian and it comes with 88 milliliters of product the typical spf does come with 50 milliliters the fact that this is 88 is music to my ears. If you've been watching any of the videos that I've done in this series, you know that I like to use what I call the daily use, daily cost average, daily average cost, whatever I call it. Um, but essentially, it's basically looking at the product, how much you're getting, how much you need to use every day, and how long it's gonna last you, essentially. And so I already did the calculation for you. I have a short video explaining that in detail, so I'll link that up above. But generally speaking, if you apply this once a day, it's gonna last you for 74 days, and it's gonna cost you 0 0.24 cents every time you use it. Now, I wanna be clear about something when I do this calculation, I'm using one application. So if you were to apply this once a day, this is how long it will last you. For someone like me and a lot of skin enthusiasts, we use a lot of products constantly. So I don't use the same sunscreen every single day. So you can kind of 
factor it in based on how many times you're going to use it. So if you're gonna be using this specific sunscreen three times a day, then you would not use 0.04 as your average, you would use 0.12 as your average, because that's three times. Depends on you, I'm just giving you the basic calculations based on one application per day. So I do wanna make that clear because I did get a lot of comments about that too. When it comes to rating your sunscreen based on price and quantity, it's not enough to just look at one. I feel like you really need to look at a lot of them and kind of judge what you're willing to pay for the quantity you're getting for yourself. So once I do film 10 of these videos, I will be doing a recap where I'll be lining them up together to see which one is the better bang for your buck. So stay tuned for that video when I do upload it and ring that notification bell so you get notified when I do post it. For now, we're going to give price and quantity a point. Ingredients. At a first glance, you'll already be able to tell that this is a chemical sunscreen. So the UV filters in this product they are using is homosalate, octocrylene, oxinoxate, and avobenzone. It does state on the product itself that it's formulated without oxybenzone, which we know that one is very... <laughs> There's a lot of things I can talk about oxybenzone, but I digress. These are the ones that they use here. One thing to mention about these chemical um, filters is that a lot of them tend to be very irritating to the skin. That's just one of the reasons why a lot of people prefer mineral sunscreens or physical sunscreens versus chemical ones. But of course, with people with darker skin tones, these physical sunscreens create this white cast on your skin, which does not look pretty at all on dark skin. So personally, I gravitate more towards chemical sunscreens. I would love to see this sunscreen be remade with a mix of both mineral and chemical filters in here. I've seen it done in a lot of other products and you get kind of the best of both worlds. It still doesn't give you any cast, but it does give you a little bit of that zinc protection because zinc is very soothing to acne prone skin or sensitive skin. So I would love to see kind of a combination in this sunscreen. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, in terms of the ingredients, it does have dimethicone, oat kernel, glycerin, glycerol, stearate, which is all very nice moisturizing ingredients. They're all very fattening, fatty. I mean, like they're fatty ingredients, so they're very moisturizing to the skin, very emollient. Then it also has aluminum starch, which is supposed to help with some of the greasiness. Now it's supposed to be non-comedogenic, which just means it's supposed to be formulated to not clog your pores, which I haven't seen a really big, crazy instance of it clogging my pores or anything like that. It does have alcohol denat listed as the second ingredient. Um, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of alcohol so high on the ingredient list. And I've done a lot more research and obviously there's only so much you're gonna know as a enthusiast of skincare versus an actual chemical formulator who has gone to school for this and XYZ. But from what I understand about alcohol, it is serving a purpose in the product as a texturizer to enhance penetration, um, to make it feel better, apply better on your skin, as well as as a preservative. So I'm not so wary when I see alcohol in my products, but the thing is when it's so high on the list, yeah, it can be very drying to your skin. Granted, there are a lot of moisturizing ingredients in here, so I haven't really felt any of that dryness, but with prolonged use, because the alcohol is so high up, it's possible that you may get some irritation from here too. So in terms of the ingredients, I will be giving it a 0.6. So this product is quite thick when it first comes out of the tube and it's, it does this weird chemical breakdown where it turns into an oil. So it's like a moisturizer to an oil type of product, which is very unusual in my personal opinion for a sunscreen. Um, it comes out white out of the tube, but because it breaks down into that oil substance, it quickly turns clear and just rubs into your skin very nicely. It does not take a lot of time to rub in either. Um, what I would suggest because of how thick it is and because of how oily it is, you may want to apply this in like sections. So rather than taking the huge glob and putting it on your face, like I did, um, you may want to apply it piece by piece. So maybe half of the glob and then rub that in and then use the other half to rub it in also. But it is really moisturizing and I don't feel like you need to use a separate moisturizer when you're using this. Just something that is, you know, very hydrating, maybe some sort of niacinamide or hyaluronic acid type of product, and then put this on top and you'll be just fine. So for application, I really have no issues with this. So it's gonna be getting a full point for me. This is supposed to be a non-heavy product and it's supposed to be oil-free as well. However, it is quite thick. So it does finish quite, um, 
shiny on the skin. If you're someone with oily skin, this may be a little bit too much for you. But if you are someone with combination or dry skin, you may really enjoy this a lot. Um, it's not heavy though. Like it's a weird type of greasiness that's not heavy but it does absorb into your skin as well so that does go away with time but it is going to be more shiny than you may be used to um it's not sticky with that being said but it does leave this like powdery dry finish on your fingers like like a dry kind of feeling it is quite unusual the way it finishes it doesn't feel like that on the face but it feels like that on your fingers for sure so you will have to wash your hands after applying it um, because it will feel a little bit weird and uncomfortable. Um, like I said, it's shiny but not heavy. You don't need a moisturizer. Under makeup, it actually applies quite well because of how moisturizing it is. The only thing I do notice if, if you're using mattifying products, which I generally don't, but I did try it for the sake of trying this out. If you're using a mattified product, because of how oily it is, you're gonna find that it kind of separates your makeup a little bit. So if you're gonna be wearing that, this may not be the one, but if you're gonna be wearing like a dewy finish or some sort of moisturizing foundation, it will apply quite nicely on your skin. One thing I forgot to mention, when I'm working out, the product stays put. Like it doesn't move around, it doesn't drip anywhere, it is supposed to be water resistant and it feels that way as well. The only thing is around my eyes, it does get a little sweaty and it does tend to sting my eyes a little bit if it gets in there. But other than that, it's fine when you're working out too. So for finish, I'm gonna give it a 0.7. In terms of reapplication, I think it applies very beautifully on the skin. There's no balling up of the product, there's no peeling, anything like that whatsoever. When you are reapplying it on top of makeup, however, because of how oily and greasy it is, it does tend to break down the foundation. In the video that you saw, like it completely took off all of the foundation on my face, and I've reapplied a lot of other foundations on top of my makeup without that type of reaction. But because of how uniquely this turns into an oil, it will break down your foundation. It's not the one to be reapplied that way. Um, so for reapplication, it will be getting 8.8. .8. As you can see, I'm wearing it underneath my foundation now. It's been maybe two hours that I've had this on and you can see that the shininess on my cheeks, it just breaks apart your foundation. Let me zoom you guys in. Do you see how shiny it looks right now? After two hours. Yeah, it looks really, really shiny. Yeah. White cast. Pleasantly surprised, as this is a chemical sunscreen, there is no white cast whatsoever. Even after the product gets wet with sweating, XYZ, no white cast. So that will be getting a point for me. For fragrance, so this product has, it doesn't have like a sunscreen scent. You know that traditional sunscreen? You're not gonna smell that. But it has like this sweet oat scent, which is actually quite strong. It's quite perfumey. It does have perfume listed as an ingredient, so of course there is fragrance there too. And I find that because it is quite strong, it does sting my eyes. I mentioned before when I'm working out, it does tend to get a lot on my face. And if you put it around your eyes when you're working out, as soon as it starts dripping, your eyes are going to get stingy, they're going to get red and itchy, which I don't like, and it's going to feel really uncomfortable. Not one for around the eyes, I just don't enjoy how strong the fragrance is. But for fragrance, it's going to be getting a 0.6. Last but not least, let's talk about flashback. So pleasantly surprised once again, this has no flashback, which is normal for chemical sunscreen. So you're going to be safe with your flash photography. Overall, I generally do like this product. There are a lot of things that I would change about it, however, but it's not the worst thing I've tried, but it's still not the best thing I've tried. I still do enjoy using it, and I think that it's wonderful just using around the house. I love how high the SPF level is, being 50 SPF. Not my favorite, not the worst, but it will be getting an overall rating of 8.2 out of 10 for me. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know, have you tried the sunscreen before? I would love to hear your thoughts. Remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video. Bye.